What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're going to continue our series on extensions for architecture by checking out an extension that allows us to push pull curved surfaces inside of SketchUp. So the other great thing about this extension is it's 100% free and I've included the link to this extension along with 19 other extensions that I think are great for architecture in my architecture extensions guide. You can download that guide and get the link to this extension at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the areas where SketchUp lacks a bit in functionality is the ability to push-pull curved faces. So like for example, right now, um, if you had a box like this one, it's very simple to push-pull the faces on this box, right? SketchUp's very good at push-pulling um, in a straight fashion any kind of single face. However, once things start getting curved, it doesn't work anymore. So if you activate the push-pull tool, for example, and you try to click on this face, you get this message that says, cannot push-pull curved or smooth surfaces. And even with faces like this one, if we were to take this edge, draw an edge across here, and then we were to soften and smooth that, even though this looks like a single face, if we were to try to push pull it, we still get that error, because if you were to turn on your hidden geometry, this is actually a split face. And so that can be kind of limiting when working in SketchUp. You have to find a bunch of different workarounds in order to try to find, uh, in order to try to get the tools to do what you want them to do. However, this extension from Fredo 6, called Joint Push Pull, allows you to push pull curved surfaces inside of SketchUp. So like for example, you can see how I could use this to thicken this wall really quickly inside of my model. No errors, no problems, no anything like that. And so you can see how having the ability to thicken these curved faces can be really valuable. So not only because you can push pull those curved faces, but also because there's tools contained in here that would allow you to push pull multiple single faces at once. So for example, this tool, the normal push-pull, would allow me to select multiple different faces at once and push-pull them both at the same time. So not only do you have the ability to push-pull curved faces and have them be smooth, you also have the ability to push-pull those multiple faces. So the way this extension works is if you remember inside of SketchUp, um, every single face that's curved is actually made up of a number of different individual flat faces. So each one of these, if we were to use the standard push-pull tool, can be extruded out because it's a flat face. However, overall, when you turn off your hidden geometry and this is just acting as a smooth face, that's when SketchUp isn't able to push pull this anymore. Well, the way that joint push pull works, especially this first option, is this will push pull this outward and I need to undo that. This will push pull this face outward and what it's doing is it's push pulling each one of those individual faces but then it's smoothing the result. So um, there's another tool in here which we already talked about, the normal push pull. This is what this would do if it wasn't smoothing the result. So the normal push pull or the normal joint push pull tool, what it does is it push pulls all of these outward and then it heals across these faces automatically. There's also tools in here where you can set this where it doesn't do that. So that first tool is very valuable for push pulling curved surfaces. The second tool on here um, is designed to round off the edges between those push pulled faces. So if I was to take these two faces for example and I was to use round push pull, what that's going to do is that's actually going to round off the edge between the two faces that you have selected in here. So you can use this to push pull edges like this and round off the intersection between them using round push pull. So you can use the second tool in order to create these beveled or rounded edges inside of your model. So the third tool contained in here is called vector push pull. And what this does is instead of push pulling faces relative to the direction they're facing, what vector push pull does is vector push pull takes a series of faces, whoops, 
and it push pulls them all in a direction. So you can see how instead of these kind of thickening, this goes straight up or straight down. So that allows you to push pull those objects in a certain direction to give it a thickness without losing the direction that all of those faces are facing. So that can be very valuable if you wanted for whatever reason to thicken this, but you wanted to retain the, uh, the contours that are in here, you could use this in order to do that. There's also a super valuable function in here um, that allows you, instead of doing that, to project these in a certain direction. So if I was to select this object, for example, I was to run vector push pull, there's an option in here for project the shape on a plane. So what you can do is you can use this to take an object like this one and you can project it so that the bottom of the object is flat. So if I was to select all of these, run vector push pull and make sure to click on this button. Now, if I click and move this down, you can see how this is going to project this shape in a direction to a flat plane. So you can use this to thicken objects like this one really easily. So if I was to click here, you can see what that does is this will take this, it'll project it down, but it'll project all of the faces in a direction on a flat plane. So this can be really useful for creating volumes and other things like that. And the cool thing about this is if you look at this, when we do that, the way that this works is this actually has created this as a solid group. So you could use this to thicken an object and then 3D print it or something like that. And let's say, for example, that we had a copy of this sphere right here. You could also do the same thing where you could select this. So you could also take a shape like this sphere and you could either use vector push pull um, with contour selected in order to push pull this down um, to create a flat profile of what this shape would look like if we were to uh, just project it on a flat plane or if you were to select this, use vector push pull and then select grid, which basically means that this isn't going to soften and smooth those faces. You could also use this to take this and create a shape like this one. So, and that one might get a little bit tricky. I'm not 100% sure, I think. So that one does get a little bit weird. This is probably not going to be a solid. Um, like the other one would, but you could still use this to use a shape like this in order to generate a cylinder or something like that. So it just gives you a ton of different options for different things that you can do here. So normal push-pull is basically what this would look like if we were to push-pull a face without smoothing the difference. So if I was to create a copy over here, if we use joint push-pull in order to thicken this face right here to make this thicker, you can see how that heals all of those edges. However, normal push-pull gives you the option to push-pull this out without healing those edges. So this, this just push-pulls every single face that's in here out um, in its own direction and it doesn't heal this on the inside. So you can use this to create a lot of interesting results. Like for example, if we were to select this face and we were to use normal push-pull, we were to push-pull this out, there's actually tools in here where you can set the way that these edges taper. So you could set these so that they come to a point if you wanted to, or you could set these so that they taper outward. You get a lot of like weird overlap when you do that. But this gives you the option to do some really interesting things with different faces. So you can set this to randomize a little bit if you want to. There's just a ton of tools in here. And just like a lot of Fredo's extensions, a lot of the time it's just fun to kind of play around with them and see what you can create. So if I was to do this, you can see how I'm able to bring all of these to points and create kind of different, different shapes like that. And so a couple applications for this really quickly is um, for one, so another good idea with this extension is to couple it with the extension Tools on Surface. So Tools on Surface is a tool from Fredo 6 that allows you to actually draw on a surface. So like for example, I could come in here and I could draw a rectangle on this surface using this extension. Well then, I could come in here and I could use Joint Push Pull to push pull this backwards right here and then you can delete out this extra in order to cut a hole in the wall. So it's not 100% perfect when you do this. You may have to do a little bit of editing but this is still going to be a lot faster than coming in here and trying to cut, push pull and cut, cut this hole manually.
So you can use joint push pull combined with tools on surface to cut an opening like this. Another thing you could do is let's say you wanted this uh, to have some kind of a grid on this face. Well, um, right now what you would have to do is you would have to go in here and unhide a bunch of geometry and then also take this line and use the move tool in copy mode to create some copies across this face. Um, well now, instead of having to come in and unhide lines, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can split split this face up using the move tool in copy mode. So I'll just move that, um, I'll create a copy right here and then I'll type in divided by five. Well now I can select this face, I can turn on joint push pull and I can set my borders to grid. And when I set my borders to grid, let's say I was to push pull this out a half inch, I could create a grid on top of this this face so without having to come in here and unhide all of this different geometry and stuff like that so once you kind of get an idea of the way this extension works there's a ton of different applications you can use it for so that's where i'm going to end this video leave a comment below and let me know what you thought did you know about this extension have you been using it i just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what i'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video Thanks, guys.